15 girls walk to school every day of the week. Is it possible to arrange them daily in rows of three so that no two girls ever find themselves in the same row more than once over the course of the seven days? For instance, this can be the arrangement corresponding to day one. What about the other days? This problem was proposed by Thomas Kirkman in 1850 in a magazine called The Ladies and Gentlemen's Diary. This can be seen as a starting point for the study of designs. But what is actually a design? This video aims to provide a brief introduction to combinatorial design theory. We will see the solution to Kirkman's schoolgirl problem and how it can be visualized using graphs. Afterwards, we will look over the formal definitions of designs and Steiner systems, see some examples and how they are helpful. In the second part of the video, which will be a little bit more technical, I will present the difficulties that appear when working with designs and provide some recently discovered theorems. I will show you what's a hypergraph and how design problems are equivalent to graph problems. I will also present the Eidos Hanani conjecture and the estimate number of designs. In the end, my opinion on this topic. I hope you like it. This video is also my submission for the third edition of the contest Summer of Math Exposition. Back to Kickman's school problem now. It turns out that arranging them is indeed possible. To keep it simple, we'll assign each girl a letter. With a new notation, this is the arrangement for day one. Here's an example of a valid arrangement. I encourage you to pause the video for a moment and check that no two girls are in the same row. This solution can be visualized using a graph. For those of you who don't know what a graph is, it is a set of nodes and some of them are paired, this pairing being represented by an edge. This is one edge. We can draw as many as we want. So this thing shown now on the screen is a graph. Graphs are very useful since the nodes and the edges can denote something related to a specific problem. In our case, every node represents a girl and an edge means that they stay on the same row in a given day. Every day will have a different color. For instance, this edge means that the first two girls stay in the same row on the first day. Adding edges between the first and the third node and then between the second and the third one, we get the first row from day one. We can continue to add orange edges and get all the rows from day one. Continuing, we get the visualization of the solution. Of course, this is not the only solution. The total number of solutions is 15 factorial times 13 over 42. This can be proven using abstract algebra, but we will not go into detail. Now, I hope that you also understand the thumbnail. It is a visualization of a simpler version of Kikman's schoolgirl problem. The difference is that there are only 9 girls and 4 days. Mathematicians started thinking about a more general version of this problem. Instead of 15 girls, could we have a set with n elements and arrange them into k subsets, so a subset of size k not only in rows of 3, so that every smaller set of size t appears exactly once in this group? This is what we call a Steiner system with parameters n, k and t. More formally, a Steiner system is a set S of k subsets of an n set X, such that every t subset of X belongs to exactly one element of S. I realize that the definition may look overwhelming, but I believe that with some examples everything will be clearer. You've already seen one. The solution to Kirkman's Kugel problem is nothing but a Steiner system with parameters 15, 3 and 2. One famous Steiner system is the so-called Fano plane. It has the parameters 7, 3 and 2, which basically means that there are 7 lines, each containing 3 points. Every pair of points belongs to a unique line. Pause the video and convince yourself of these statements. Now that we understand what a Steiner system is, let's see how it is related to what we call a design. A set S of K subsets of an N set X is a design with parameters n, k, t and lambda if every t subset of x belongs to exactly lambda elements of s. 
So the major difference between Steiner systems and designs is that designs have one more parameter, namely lambda. However, if lambda is equal to one, we get a Steiner system. So Steiner systems are just a particular case of what we more generally call designs. These designs are helpful for statisticians in applications of the ANOVA technique, especially designs with the third parameter equal to two. But they also help develop error coding codes, design experiments and test software. However, when K and T are large, designs are not only difficult to construct but also to calculate how many they are given the parameters. As for now, we only know the estimated number of designs. Mathematicians though embrace these difficulties and, over the past few years, very impressive results have been achieved. If you are interested in the most recent discovery in the field of design theory, I highly encourage you to check an excellent article posted in Quanta magazine which talks about subspace design. I will give you a link in the description below. Note that finding the number of designs doesn't necessarily mean that we have to construct them. For instance, long-standing problems in design theory were whether there exist any non-trivial Steiner systems with t greater or equal to 6, and whether infinitely many have t equal to 4 or 5. Both existences were proved by Peter Kivash from the University of Oxford in 2014. He made major contributions to the field of design theory. His proof is non-constructive, meaning that he showed that even if you don't know how to build such designs, they always exist. The key to all these discoveries in design theory is that we can view the designs as hypographs. But what is a hypograph? Remember that a graph is a collection of nodes with some edges between them. Previously, we've represented a graph by drawing it. However, it is not necessary to draw it. A graph is uniquely determined by specifying the number of nodes and the set of edges. For this graph, we have seven nodes and the edges 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6 and 4, 6. Note that the shape of the graph doesn't actually matter. So these two graphs are the same. Hypographs are more general, so to speak, graphs. While in a graph the edge connects only two nodes, the edges of a hypergraph are defined as subsets of nodes, so an edge can connect more than just two nodes. Let's say we have a hypergraph of three nodes and an edge connecting all three of them. We would have something like this. Now the drawing is a bit confusing because it looks like there are two edges rather than only one. To avoid any confusion, this is how we mark that it is only one. Let's add one more edge of size 4. As we add more nodes, the drawing gets messy. This is why it is preferred the algebraic representation, thus specifying how many nodes are in the hypograph and the set of edges. In our case, we have 6 nodes and 2 edges, one of size 3 and one of size 4. A hypograph is called R-uniform or an R-graph if every edge has size R. Our example does not have this property for no R since one edge contains three nodes and the other one four. But if we delete the node number six, we get a three uniform hypograph or a three graph. Hypographs are useful when it comes to represent designs. Think of the visualization of the solution to Kickman's schoolgirl problem. There, we use the graph, but we could do that only because it's a Steiner system with parameters 15, 3, and 2. So t equals 2. If t grows, we are forced to use hypographs. From now on, we will use the notation displayed on the screen to denote the complete R graph on Q vertices. Vertices is a synonym for nodes. You can use the one you like more. A Steiner system with parameters n, k, and t is equivalent to a T graph on k vertices decomposition of a larger T graph on n vertices. So all these partial graphs shown down on the screen are two graphs and together they form a decomposition of a two graph on 15 vertices. Even designs can be seen as a T graph on k vertices decomposition of a multi hypograph. I won't explain what a multi hypograph is in this video, but what I truly want to emphasize is that every design problem is equivalent to a graph problem. With this in mind, even theorems that are not directly linked to designs can come in handy to solve design problems. One example of paramount importance is the Erdos Hanani conjecture, which was later proved by Rodel in 1850. Let positive integers t, k, and n and the family f of k subsets of the set of the first n positive integers be given. We say that f is t dense if any t subset of the set is contained in at least one member of f. On the other hand, we say that f is t sparse if any two members of f intersect in less than t elements. Thus, every t subset of the set is contained in at most one member of f. 
Note that we are not talking about designs, not even Steiner systems. In Steiner systems, we have that every T subset appears in exactly one member of the initial family, as opposed to T dense or T sparse families in which each subset has to appear in at least one member of the family and at most one respectively. This is why the families with these properties are called approximate Steiner systems. With that being said, we have the following inequality. Now, we will use the same notation as Erdos and Spencer first did to denote the minimal number of elements of a T-dense family and the maximal number of elements of a T-sparse family. From the first inequality, we get the following. Later, it was also found an upper bound for the minimal number of elements of a T-dense family, leading to the following limit equality conjectured by Hanani and Erdos. Again, this doesn't seem to do anything with designs, but the conclusion can be transformed into a graph problem now shown on the screen. This was solved by Rodel, who introduced a semi-random construction method known as the Nibble, which has since had a great impact on combinatorics, including Peter Kivash's proofs of existence. Note that we don't have the exact number of the edge disjoint T graphs on K vertices in T graphs on N vertices. That is due to that O of 1. We'll explain in a few moments its significance. As for now, we don't have the exact number of designs given its parameters, but we have some estimates. For the general case, this is is the estimated number. That divisibility property does not mean that we analyze a particular case. It is a necessary condition. Fix any i subset of the n set and consider all the sets of k subsets that contain this i subset. This is not the exact number because in the formula we meet again with the little o notation. This notation is formally defined as follows. Intuitively, this means that as n approaches infinity, f of n becomes insignificant compared to g of n. In mathematical terms, the limit as n approaches infinity of f of n over g of n is zero. So this estimation is the closest one we've got. It may not be a very satisfying one to say so, but this tells us something about the difficulty of the topic. I was so baffled when I first seen the definitions of Steiner systems and designs. What attracted me though was the powerful link between designs and hypergraphs, especially the visualizations. I hope you found them interesting too. One last thing, the universe itself can be seen as a hypergraph. See, all roads lead to maths. Thanks for watching until the end and please consider subscribing.